Welcome to our channel. Today, we bring you another topic, mixing live drums in Cubase Pro 12. Learn how to mix drums from start to end, from compression and EQ to phase correction and transient manipulation. Then add depth and dimension to your drum mix with parallel compression and reverb. 11 Steps to Mixing Drums Like a Pro Step 1. Fine Tuning Although drums aren't fundamentally musical instruments, they have a pitch, and it's crucial to keep them in tune. The Torque plugin was created to change the root note of a drum sound. Whenever feasible, attempt to tune the kick and snare drums to the song's root note, or fifth. Depending on how many drums you have, toms are usually tuned to different intervals within a key. The bigger the intervals, the fewer toms there are. For example, it's customary to tune three toms to the perfect fourth interval, or occasionally third significant intervals. Some musicians and producers tune them to singing chords in the song. Step 2. Correct Phase Problems After you've fine-tuned your drums, double-check that the phase connection between the various recordings is still intact. When recordings are out of phase, phase cancellations occur, making particular frequencies uneven or disappear entirely. Consider the physical distance between the drum kit and the microphones used to record it to understand why drums' phase incoherence is so frequent. The close mic at the snare's position will be the first to record the sound as it goes outward with each snare crack, typically the loudest and most unique component of the kit. The overheads and any room mics placed further away from the equipment will pick up the sound with a bit of but noticeable delay. Step 3. Add a gate and shape transients. Some engineers use dynamic processing before equalization, while others prefer to use it after equalization. Both are okay, however, be aware that each approach has a distinct sound. Experiment with several methods to see which one works best for you. Drum bleed, when the sound of other drums bleeds across to surrounding mics, is particularly unavoidable when working with recorded drums. Engineers employ gates and expanders to recover complete control over each sound. These are useful for creating clean kick and snare sounds and manipulating them freely without being hampered by nearby drums and cymbals. Step 4. Subtractive EQ Typically, parametric EQs like the SSL E channel and G channel equalizers are used for subtractive EQ. To discover issue spots in your recordings, employ narrow bands with high Q values. If you're having problems locating the troublesome frequencies, such as persistent resonance in a snare's body, use the sweeping technique. First, increase the Q on one of the EQ's bands to narrow it. Next, increase the gain on that band to maximum. Sweep the possible frequencies on that band slowly. Stop when you hear a particularly obnoxious frequency. Instead of enhancing that frequency, lower the gain to attenuate it. You might wish to increase the Q value to smooth out the EQ adjustment. Step 5. Additive EQ Additive EQ is usually done with EQs that are wider and more colorful. Some prefer the sound of API consoles found on the API 550 and 560. Some people enjoy the Shep 73's rock sound, modeled after a vintage Neve 1073 unit. Finally, some people prefer the vintage sound of the RS-56 or PuigTech EQs. Step 6. Compress It's time to focus on dynamics once you've got the frequency spectrum adjusted for the drum bleed under control. Compression might be challenging to master, yet it's one of the most critical aspects of establishing a current drum sound. The kick and snare are commonly given a gain decrease of 3 to 6 dB. Toms can be compressed depending on how frequently they're used in a song. From not at all compressed jazz recordings to smash to smithereens rock, cymbals, overheads, and room mics cover the spectrum. The time parameters of the compression are just as significant as the quantity of reduction. Slow attack timings enable the first impact to pass before being compressed, but if you set it too slow, your compressor may miss specific drum beats entirely. 
Fast attack speeds assist tighten up the performance by diluting the first transient of the impact, which may be fantastic for providing control, but they can also suffocate a track and push it farther back in the mix if set too fast. Fast release times can assist raise perceived loudness and shoving drums up in your face, but doing so too quickly might result in an artificial pumping sound. Step 7. Reverb Engineers use an aux send to send the individual drum tracks to a reverb to create depth. The reverb setting will vary depending on the music, but the length should usually be proportional to the beat. For example, you should usually hear the reverb tail decrease until right before the next snare hit when the snare strikes. Although this is subjective, it's probably too long if the reverb tail doesn't fade away before the next snare strike. Then, to create the necessary space, combine the reverb effect with the dry recordings. Unless you're utilizing extreme creative products, a reasonable rule of thumb is to make the reverb channel loud enough that you don't notice it when it's muted, but not so loud that it stands out or demands your attention when it's on. Step 8. Set Parallel Compression Parallel compression is commonly used to thicken and brighten up the sound of the drums. This is accomplished by creating an aux track to which you'll transmit multiple drum kit channels to be processed, then mix it with the rest of the drums. Depending on the sound you want to achieve, you might simply send the snares and some hi-hat to the parallel bus or transmit the overhead and a few toms. A similar channel may then be sent to the drum bus and the rest of the drums. If you apply more processing to the parallel track, such as saturation, you may have massive drums. Some engineers will make their similar drums sound extremely crushed, saturated, and trashy. Think 10 to 1 ratio, not a sound you'd want on its own. When mixed back in with the dry drums, however, the sound may offer the extra oomph that helps support the drum kit significantly. Step 9. Apply Bus Compression Compression applied to the bus is often more subtle than compression applied to individual channels and it aids in gluing the drum kit together. Typically, ratios are maintained low, approximately 2 to 1. As a result, attack timings are often slow to let the kit's transients shine through. Although release times vary based on the recording speed, many compressors, such as the SSL G Master Bus Compressor, have an auto-release feature. In addition, some compressors include characteristics that make dealing with drums much easier. For example, the API 2500's threshold detector has a unique thrust filter that prevents low frequencies such as those from the kick from enormously triggering the compressor. This is beneficial because the increased low-end sound energy will more easily activate the compressor, bringing the cymbals and top end down with it. Step 10. Add beef and aggression with distortion. Your drums should sound quite close to blended at this stage. From a tonal and dynamic standpoint, they're fitting perfectly in the track, not getting in the way of the voice. But what if you want to push them over the brink, add some anger, and strike the audience harder, and strike the audience harder, deepening the genre? Make a similar distortion effect. Your drums will be able to make a statement in the mix due to this. Using an aux send, open the MDMX overdrive and route a little drum bus signal to this parallel drive channel. The drums should have a sense of thickness and color applied right away. To find the perfect sound for the song, experiment with the two distortion forms and volume knob and the compression settings on the plugin to vary the distortion dynamic nature. Shaping the EQ on MDMX Overdrive also allows you to fine-tune a specific frequency band in the mix that you might like to speak louder, and the amount of signal you send to the bus controls how over-the-top the effect will sound. Step 11. Set Automation Volume automation is a practical and straightforward approach to bring your drum tracks to life, available in any DAW. Take a close listen to each drum channel during the song, for example, when your mix is well set. You could discover that the hi-hat's volume is perfect in the verse groove, but has to be lowered at other times, or that raising it 1 dB in a particular region makes it sound even better. 
Setting minute elements using automation at the end of the mixing process helps tighten up the drum sound in the mix and the way the overall arrangement is communicated to the listener. Finally, it would help if you had a punchy kick, a cracking snare, thunderous toms, and shimmering cymbals. Just keep in mind that these suggestions are merely a starting point. Listen carefully, service the drums and the arrangement, and don't be scared of fiddling with knobs and go creative. I hope you enjoyed this episode. Thank you so much for watching and do not forget to subscribe and hit the bell button. Would you please subscribe and click the bell symbol to receive more videos before continuing.